We are going to compute the limit as t equals to 0, 1 over t times the square root of 1 plus t inside, minus 1 over t. If we plug in 0 into all the t's, we are going to end up with an indeterminate form. That means we have to do more work. So let's just focus on the algebra that we can do with this. Here, we are subtracting two fractions. Let's get the common denominator first, so we can combine them together. For the first fraction, we have t times the square root of 1 plus t on the denominator, but then for the second one, we just have the t. So let's multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 1 plus t. So this way, they will have the same denominator, and we can continue. This is going to be the limit as t goes to 0, and then we can put both fractions together with the same denominator, t square root of 1 plus t. And then for the numerator, it's just going to be 1 minus 1 times the square root of 1 plus t. So it's just going to be minus the square root of 1 plus t. And now, if we plug in 0 into all the t's, we will end up with 0 over 0. We still have to do more work for this. And as you can see on the top, we have 1 minus the square root, right? So let's try to multiply by its conjugate. So I will take this and multiply with 1 plus the square root of 1 plus t on the top and also do it on the bottom. And then we can continue with this. This is going to be the limit as t goes to 0. And you see that the purpose of this conjugate is we can fix the top, right? On the bottom, we are not going to touch it. Let's just leave it as how it is. I'm not going to multiply it out. We'll just keep it as t square root of 1 plus t times 1 plus square root of 1 plus t. And then for the top, when we are trying to multiply the conjugate, this is going to be a minus b times a plus b. We know the result is going to be a squared minus b squared. It's always going to be like that. So to multiply this out, we can just look at the first term, which is 1, and square that. 1 squared is 1. And then we subtract the second term, the square root of 1 plus t, and we square that as well. The square, square root cancel. We will have just 1 plus t, but then we must put that in the parentheses. So put a parentheses, 1 plus t. Once again, the square and the square root cancel. We just have the inside, but then it's the a squared minus the whole b squared part. So this is how it's supposed to be. And make sure we distribute the negative. So we technically have 1 minus 1 minus t. As you can see, 1 minus 1 is just 0. So this is going to be the same as the limit as t goes to 0. On the top, we have negative t. And we have all that on the bottom. So t square root of 1 plus t times 1 plus square root of 1 plus t on the denominator. And then guess what? This t and that t can cancel each other out. So we can cross this out and cancel that out. This will tell me I just have negative 1 on the top. And you see, this is the major cancellation. This is the good things that happens, right? So we can actually just now plug in 0 into all the remaining t's. On the top, we have negative 1 over, this is going to be, let me just show you guys all the work. We have 1 plus 0, and then times 1 plus square root of 1 plus 0 into this t, and then we can do the rest. On the top, it's negative 1, and then on the bottom, this is 1. Inside of the parentheses, we have 1 plus square root 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. So altogether, the answer is negative one half. That's it.